Hi, I'm Matt Baker, and I'm an alumnus of the Civic Orchestra of Chicago. I currently perform with the Chicago Philharmonic and various other groups around the Chicago land area. Today, I'd like to share with you my philosophy on practicing, because I think it's really easy to fall into the trap of thinking that if you blindly put time into practicing, that you'll always be getting better. And this might be true to a point, but alongside having a good work ethic, it's important to be doing intelligent work. At the heart of that, I think, is building confidence. Building confidence in your fundamental technique, as well as building confidence in playing the repertoire that you're working on, whether it's etudes or solo or orchestral repertoire. My first tip is about slow practice. You've probably heard to practice slowly. Most students know when they have a difficult passage with fast notes, challenging rhythms, or awkward intervals, that they should practice it slowly first. But if you only practice slowly until you get the right notes, you might be missing a key point for me, which is that slow practice should be to program the body that the passage feels easy and comfortable. If you're quick to bump the metronome up to the next tempo marking as soon as you get the passage right, or even if you've gotten it right three times in a row, you might still continue to associate that passage with stress or difficulty instead of ease. And this should be your key to deciding how slowly to practice a passage. Don't just take a few clicks off. I often practice at half tempo or even a third of the marked tempo for the fastest licks. Whatever tempo you need for it to feel easy should be your guide. And as you do bump the tempo up, continue asking yourself, does this still feel easy? I promise, if you practice this way, you will feel less nervous in performance and more confident. This concept isn't just limited to slow practice. It can be applied to other aspects of your technique beyond dexterity. As a brass player, two variables that can make an otherwise easy passage difficult are volume and register. A relatively simple passage that's exposed and marked pianissimo, or that it's at the top of your range, won't be made any easier by playing it slowly. Instead here, I suggest that you search for a place of stress-free ease. Find a volume or a range where the passage feels easy and start there every day when you practice it. Slowly over time, stretching it to where it's marked. Adjusting the register of a passage is a great opportunity to work on your transposition skills. Playing a passage a third or a fourth below where it's written might be the sweet spot for you. And once it begins to feel comfortable, you can then take it up a half step at a time until you're playing it as written. Remember, what feels easy each day might be different. So don't be too quick to take for granted where you left off in a previous practice session. Remember, stress is your enemy, so always err on the side of starting at a point where you feel confident. The other half of this equation is being mindful during your practice of whether you're in a practicing mindset or in a performance one, keeping in mind that you don't necessarily have to have things polished at their mark tempi to practice a performance mindset. The way I delineate these two mental spaces is by what I'm thinking about. Am I thinking about the technique or am I thinking musically? When I perform, I don't want to be thinking about the technique. I don't want to be thinking about how to produce the sound. Instead, I strive to play along with the ideal sound concept going in my head, thinking about the color of sound and the phrasing. Thoughts on technical production get in the way of that. If I start to think about where to place my tongue or how to move my air, then I'm not thinking about the music anymore. And this has to be practiced just like you practice your scales. Take time in your fundamental routine to learn to trust. After five or 10 minutes of diligent practice on whatever technique your teacher is focused with you on, Try doing the same exercises or playing through the same passage while thinking musically, trusting that these techniques are beginning to be ingrained and that your body will start to respond autonomously. I often find things are made more difficult because we've learned to think that they're difficult. And no matter how much you practice a single technique, you won't gain mastery of that technique until you learn to trust yourself. And that's gonna take small steps every day. So the last tip I'll share with you is to try to think creatively when you practice. Ask yourself, how many different ways can I practice the same passage or the same technique? One of my favorite things to do is to improvise around a passage or make up a short piece using a technique that I'm practicing. This can be a fantastic way to make yourself think musically because when you're improvising, you don't have time to stop and think about how things work. So you might actually surprise yourself with something that you thought was difficult coming out quite easily. A really great place to try this is at the very beginning of your day, when you first take the horn out of the case. So many brass players want to spend 30 or 40 minutes doing long tones before they get to any music. But I think it's important to remind ourselves at the beginning of the day that why we do this, that we want to play musically. So try to just make up a melody. And I'm gonna to try to do it for you right here. It can be something simple like that, but just try to think musically and just try to make a beautiful sound and you might surprise yourself. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the other great practice tips videos.